I'm a business guru. I go around the world guruing to various businesses. And I always get the chief executive look at me and say, uh, wait, wait a minute. What's your qualification for coming here today and telling us how we should run our business? Well, how are you qualified to be a guru? Well, my qualification for doing this is very simple. I was expelled from school, yeah? And, I, and when they expelled me, they told me I was a disruptive influence. Now, that's a disaster. Where do you go from there? Alcoholism, drug abuse, living in the street, sleeping in a cardboard box. Unless you sink so low that you have no pride and no morals left. When that happens to you, there's only one place left to go, and that's into sales. Um, <laughs> which, I love selling. So, I don't know, I love selling. Selling to me is the most exciting thing in the world. And I don't just mean selling things to people who want them either. The biggest thrill I get is selling things to people who don't want them. That, that client that says, no, leave me alone, go away, please stop. Once you've sold to them. It's like going wild boar hunting for the first time. You know, it's been vicious. You've lost an eye and some teeth and ears been ripped off, but this thing is dead at your feet. Now, once you've achieved that, you don't want to go to Farmer Higgins' piggery and start beating piglets to death. You want the customer that comes roaring out of the bushes with the entrails of the last salesman on his tusks. You know, the customer that would have me carried, struggling to the car park by security. And as the tarmac came up to meet my face, I would say, what's your last word then, is it, Mr. Jenkins? <laughs> See, I think what we've got to do, we've got a very short time together this afternoon, and I need to set some ground rules. See, classically... What happens is that I, I'm, I'm kind of hired. Hey, let's have him as a kind of after, you know, we'll have him after lunch to wake everybody. You know, one hour keynote speech. And you always kind of, I look through the responses and I always get, oh, Jeff Patch was very funny. Oh, I didn't know what he was on about, but you know, we all enjoyed it. You know, but the, the, the point, and I think if after this you think, yeah, quite good, but I don't know what the point was. The, the, the point is today is kind of different. Because all of the stupid stories that I tell have, have got inside this kind of meat. I've got an energy and a passion for making businesses move forward. My wife charitably describes me as autistic, which means that sometimes I, I don't actually, you know, so if you want the point from me, look for it or ask me. And however daft or lunatic the kind of where I'm going, there is a point to it, I promise you. Um, and you can ask for that, and it should progress your businesses forward. But another thing that kind of really stresses me out, when I look through the list, there's everything from retailers to management consultants here. So we all have slightly different agendas as regards sales. Now, classically, as, as a person who loved selling, and I could sell anything, to honestly sell anything to anybody, companies would say, well, you know, the classic old-fashioned thing, the boss would say, well, we need people like you. This is what you need, we all, you sell it. We'll build it, you'll sell it. All you've got to do is fill that order book. You just get out there. But the world's changed. The world's changed. You can't see these borders between who does the selling. Who do... In fact, I would almost suggest the thing that bothers me is nobody does any selling anymore. Nothing gets sold anymore. Nobody actually grabs you by the throat and says, listen, mush, are you going to buy this or not? You know, when did that the last, the last time that happened? In fact, there's all this thing of developing relationship selling. Relationship selling. And I thought, that sounds nice to have a relationship. And I, I went out one-to-one -one with a sales rep once. And, uh, you know, because this guy wasn't doing too well. And, I, and, and we stopped outside this glittering building. And I said, what was this? He said, oh, it's our most important client. It's our most important client. We have a marvellous relationship. I said, oh, great, what are you going to sell him then? He said, shh, 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 what do you mean, shh? Don't want to sell him anything. Why not? I don't want to spoil the relationship. <laughs> you know, what are we doing here? Building bridges, forging links. So, <laughs> you know, again, you know, the, you see, and again, I mean, really, I'm always been like, Jeff, could you come and do customer care? Could you come and do customer care? Jeff, could you come and do sales for us? We want sales. I want, you know, and, 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 and what's customer care got to do with sales? And then you suddenly find that people are taking such good care of their customers, they don't make any money out of them. Or some people are so keen on selling that, you know, and, and I could never work this out. Now, one day I was, well, I live, come from Gloucestershire. 
when men are men and sheep are frightened. And, uh, and I'm, and I'm, no, I'm not going into the sheep jokes. The, um, the, um, I walk along, and there's one of the local farmers, and he's leaning on a gate. Hello, Jeff, how are you doing, my lar? And I said, hello, Babs, how are you? Oh, it's all right, that. And he's got this big pig, great big pig with a great smiley face. And it's snuffling in his pocket. Oh, you know what? Hey, you hello, Rosie. Are you all funny? She knows I've got an apple. She knows. Hey, you go. You don't know that, don't you? Here we are, my lamb. Here we are, my baby. Have an apple. <laughs> oh, she loves her apple. Oh, Rosie does. She's going off to be bacon next week, aren't you, darling? What? Well, of course. I'm a bloody pig farmer. That's the customers, you know? You've got to love them and cuddle them, but sometimes we've got to eat them, you know? So, but, you know but, but if you look on the other side, if you look at battery farming, where they lock the things up and keep them in the dark, like most customers are treated, you, you end up with bad product. But on the other hand, you don't want pet pigs. So, so what we've got to do is we've got to kind of amalgamate our love for our customers, our regard for our customers, but never lose sight of the fact that we need to profit from our customers.